Well, let's take a look at some of the details of the Iranian initiative. It calls for both sides to end the fighting simultaneously and resolve the conflict without foreign intervention. When that happens, for observers from Iran, Egypt and Saudi Arabia and Turkey, members of the new contact group, to go and monitor the ceasefire, and then for foreign countries to stop supplying arms and support to either side. And it also calls for talks between the Syrian government and the opposition, as well as a national reconciliation committee. Phyllis Bennis is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies in Washington, D.C., and joins us now from our studio there. Thanks for being with us. What do you make of this Iran proposal? Well, I think it's important that Iran is engaging. This is an initial proposal. This isn't the final arrangement. I think it's very problematic, for instance, that it seems the language that I saw, at least, and I think there's probably more than one translation floating around, uh, but the language that I saw seemed to indicate that Iran's call was only for ending shipments of arms to what they called armed groups, not specifying an end to armed sales, armed shipments, armed support to the government. That's obviously not going to fly as a, as a final arrangement. But I think what's more important than the details that Iran is putting on the table at the moment is the notion that Iran needs to be part of any negotiation process if it's going to be taken seriously. But is Iran going to be allowed to be part of that process? We've got this uh, four-party uh, new consulting group uh, to which Saudi Arabia uh, most obviously decided not to show up last time. And now we have, right. on the eve of this proposal, the U.S. Rele revealing this information that it claims to have about Iran supplying the other side. Well, I don't think there's any question that the leak of the, the intelligence document from the U.S. Uh, was timed very directly to undermine the Iranian announcement of its first diplomatic uh, proposals. Uh, the, there's nothing new in it. The fact that Iran is shipping arms to Syria is an old story. The fact that they're shipping them through Iraq is an old story. The new report seems to indicate that there's perhaps more than we were told publicly, but there's not even the claim that this is anything new. I think what's new here is a U.S. effort to make sure to divert attention from the Iranian uh, proposals. The real question will be whether the U.S. tries to interfere with the meetings, with the process, with the possibilities of this new set of four-party talks that was convened first by the, the, uh, the president of Egypt, President Morsi. Uh, who called for the, the four party talks on the basis that talks within the region had the best chance of success. There has also been talk, I just returned from South Africa, and there was talk there about whether the IBSA group, the three countries of India, Brazil, and South Africa, the powerhouses, if you will, of the global south, might be engaged as well to back up the four party talks. In any of those situations, the U.S. would be out of the loop, as would be Russia and China, the major powers. Europe would not be involved. This would be an initiative of the region and of the global south, which would be a real game changer, both in terms of its own possibility for success mm. and also a way to say that not only the U.S. gets to set the terms. Well, l let me just challenge that point for a second. I mean, a real game changer in the sense that you're having a, a large number of very important voices in the conversation, but will it actually fly unless it gets the support of other voices? For one, you've got the United States attempting, as you've pointed out, to marginalize any Iranian involvement. And then you've also got the notable absence of the real family, as Iran called it, the neighborhood. Saudi Arabia, as I say, not turning up to the quartet talks. The GCC countries not in any way seeming to participate in any of, uh, of this. Right. Well, I think we don't know yet. It's very early. There's only been one meeting. It's unfortunate that the Saudis decided not to come, but that was only to the first meeting. If it looks like there's some motion, some motion forward on this, I think the Saudis would probably want to uh, have a seat at the table. The other countries are not likely to move without the Saudis. Uh, even Qatar, which has been sending arms separately, uh, then Saudi Arabia is unlikely to continue on its own. If Turkey is part of the uh, the regional quartet, if it's going to be called that, uh, is, is going to make it much more difficult for those countries to get arms to the rebel groups. S Turkey has been playing the role of facilitating that. Mm. If Turkey pulls back in the context of a, uh, a broader effort to stop the arms going to both sides, then I think it would be much more difficult for the GCC and for other countries in the region 
to continue to try to send arms without the participation of those who have been among the most powerful arms supporters so far. All right. Phyllis Bennis in Washington, D.C., thank you for your comments.